Shalom, everyone. Where should I look? There, right? You are not mistaken. I was not confused. Uh, the reason that I have to record again lesson number three, pronouns and four basic verbs, in other words, how to uh, start a basic sentence in Hebrew, is because um, th these lessons were not on catch. I was sure they're on catch. And I wanted to upload it to my YouTube channel, and it wasn't there anymore after 24, hour, 24 hours. This is why I'm doing this today. So I'm going to repeat lesson number three. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. It wouldn't be as long as uh, the first one was, but that's good news for you. Okay? Who is in the house? Who wants to say shalom? As we say. Hooray. That's English. Can you do shalom for me? Shalom, shalom. Uh, in Hebrew, we have a, like a, a slang. Shalom, shalom, shalotavoli b'chalom. Shalom, shalom, and do not come in my dream. <laughs> it's just a silly slang. Okay, so again, you're not mistaken. I'm going to repeat lesson, ne, lesson number shalosh, number three. I think I'm going to record lesson number four as well uh, to not disappoint my, uh, you know, everyone who already seen lesson number three. So, as I said uh, on previous lesson, it's really easy to start a sentence, a basic sentence in Hebrew, because the um, structure of a sentence is like uh, a lot of other languages, subject, verb, and the rest of the sentence. Of course, I'm relating to sentences that has a verb, because we are we also have sentences who doesn't have a verb, right? Uh, for example, um, there is sun outside. There isn't sun outside. Sun. I said sound. Sun outside. So a sentence that is there is there isn't. It's a different kind of sentence. I'm now relating to the other twenty. 99% um, sentences that, is, that are out there, which contains a verb. So we're going to start with the pronouns. So this is a, a recap on the pronouns, okay? Any of you remember how to say me or I in Hebrew? It's the same word. We don't have two different words. It's the same word for me slash I. Three people are in the house. How do I say I or me? I'm going to say it for you. Ani. Okay? So let's do the pronouns in my style. Um, and just imagine a boy and a girl standing behind me. I don't know if you're recording this for future viewing as I'm working at this time. Thanks. Yes, so um, this is why I'm uh, re-recording it, uh, because it's going to be on my YouTube channel. So you are definitely welcome to watch the replay for the next 24 hours. Or watch it in my YouTube account. Also, from now on, uh, I have this um, plugin on Chrome that allows me to just download every Periscope that I record. Okay? So no such problem will be in the future. Okay, I'm carrying on. Pronouns. Just imagine one girl and one boy standing behind me. We're gonna get to them later on. So I'm starting. Ani. You're welcome. Listen. Ani. Now, a boy and a girl ahead of me. Ata for the boy. At for the girl. And I'm pointing because I'm directly approaching to them. Okay, so again, Ani, Ata, the boy, At, the girl, which means you. Now I want to approach both of them, like plural, two or more people. I'm going to say Atem. So you see, I'm starting at the same letters. Ani, Ata, At, Atem. Okay, now I want to say we, I'm going to say anachnu, so again, ani, ata, boy, at, girl, atem, you plural, 
So if I want to talk to all of you, I'm sorry for that. So if I want to talk to all of you, whatever your number is, as long as you're plural, as long as you're more than one, I'm going to say a tim. Okay? Again, a me, a ta, at, a tim, a nachnu. And in the original scope, I said, a lesson, I said that anachnu is very similar to Arabic because they are saying nachnu. But in Hebrew, we say anachnu. Okay? We finished with us, the people who are attending, the people who attend here, that can hear us. Now we're going to talk about the boy and the girl that cannot hear me. And I like to say I gossip about them, right? Just to, for the sake of they don't hear me. So a boy and a girl cannot hear me. Um, let's say that the mic is a boy. And let's say that the mirror is a girl. So they cannot hear me. Uh, and I want to say... I want to talk about him. I'm going to say, who? Now, the ones that cannot hear me starts with the letter H. In Hebrew, hey, her sound. Before that, we did the E uh sound. Ani, ata, at, anachnu, atem. Now, we go into the her sound. Who is very thin. Too thin, to my opinion. He is very beautiful. And I know he in Hebrew is masculine. I know that in he in English is masculine. He in uh, Hebrew is feminine. Just imagine age, I, just for the difference, okay? He uh, gained a lot of fat recently. I don't know. I'm just doing it like, like I'm gossiping about them. Although gossip can be positive as well. Now I want to talk about them. So I need the M sound. Hem, okay? Again, who, he, hem. Let's do the whole thing again, okay? Are you ready? Again, I'm so sorry for the noise. I'm not alone here in this house. So we're going to start the pronouns again. Ani, ata, at, atem. Anachnu, who, he, hem, okay, hem, who, he, hem, finished with the pronouns. All we need to do is watch it over and over and over and over again, and that's it. So, you know, I taught you pronouns because you cannot uh, start, you know, start a basic sentence without knowing the pronouns uh, it's very basic it's very uh, popular sentences uh, but of course every subject can be something else uh, the mic is a subject right the mic and then I'm saying something about the mic uh, the mirror ha mara ha in Hebrew ha means the and it's a prefix it's not a word by itself like in English, right? The is a word. In Hebrew, we just need the prefix. It has been attached to the subject. Ha, mirror. Ha, microphone. And so on. Moving on. Now, I had this chart, okay? And in this chart, I had four basic verbs that I conjugated in four different ways. And why did I do that? Because in Hebrew, almost any word, mainly a verb, let's talk about verbs and adjectives. Almost any verbs, no, verbs and adjectives, for sure, has a gender, feminine or masculine, or, and, not or, a number. And by number, I don't mean how many of them. If I say a verb, I don't know how many of them are. By saying a number, I just mean singular or plural. So again, every verb in Hebrew contains two types of information. The gender of the word, of the verb, and the number. 
In other words, a verb in Hebrew tells me if it's masculine, feminine, singular, or plural. This is why I have four different ways to conjugate each verb, okay? And because I'm teaching four main verbs that are going to help you to start a basic sentence in Hebrew, so I made this chart and I posted it on the, the Hebstar's Twitter account. And now I'm going to show it to you again from my computer. Are you alive, by the way? <laughs> I'm going to show it again. So that was the chart. Again, it's been, uh, it's on my Hebstar's, uh, you see, ha this is how you spell Hebstar's, Twitter account. Okay, so let's see. So as I said, four basic verbs, want, need, can, and love. And four different way to conjugate them. Masculine singular. Feminine singular, plural general, and only girls. Plural only girls. I told you, I gave you a tip because Hebstars is not just to teach you, but to give you a tip about modern Hebrew, the ones that we use on the street, uh, and not just the formal one from the books. We mainly drop this. So if it looks too much for you and you want to drop one conjugations, this one, the plural one, general, can, you know, include the, this one. Although this is the correct form to talk about plural girls, it is very okay to drop it and not relate to this side of the um, chart. Okay, so I'm going to talk about these three. So... I'm going to read the whole thing, and before I'm going to read, I'm going to explain to you what I did with the drop. Ch sound is not a sound that you have in English. So instead of just inventing, you know, two letters and just say that, I don't know, CH is ch, I don't believe in that because I cannot invent two letters that will remind you ch. What I can do is to use your imagination and do a little drop. And this drop represents, <laughs> I know it's funny, it represents a spit, a drop of spit. And why? Because when you spit, it sounds like the sound that we have and you don't, which means ch, okay? If you're home right now and you're alone and you don't, you know, want to, if you want to hide it from anyone or whatever, I want you to practice ch sound for a second. Try to do it with me. Ch, ch is like you do ch. And then, and then you spit. So it's a little joke of mine. Anyway, anywhere I did this drop, I mean ch sound. It's unformal completely. You won't see it on the books, but this is how I teach on Hebstars. I'm trying to simplify Hebrew. That's my goal. I'm not here to give you unnecessary information. I'm here to give you shortcuts, but not on the expense of you be able to speak. Okay. In other words, not in the expense of your ability to speak. You see, sometimes it takes me a little while to uh, rephrase myself. And that's okay. That's one of uh, Hebstar's messages. Just speak. Don't be afraid to speak and make mistakes because it's going to get better in the future. Okay, so let's say that I want to approach. Now that we know the pronouns, I want to approach this dude. Okay, you see it's green, right? Let's see. No, you know what? Let's use our guy from before. Now he hear me and he stands in front of me, stands in front of me. And now I want to approach him and I'm going to say don't, don't forget this is a guy right now, okay? I want to approach him and say uh you want a car. No. Let's use universal world word. You want a chocolate. Or I can ask him, you want a chocolate? Because in, in Hebrew, um, to ask the yes, if it's yes or no question, to ask, it's exactly like the sentence itself. So I can say, you want chocolate? And I can say, you want chocolate? If the answer is yes or no, I can do that. I can ask questions. As long as it's not WH question, I can just put a question mark and make it a question. So let's do it. I want to approach him. He's... A male, he is singular, 
and I want to approach him. So before I use the verb rotze, I need a subject. I need to approach him. And I will say, Ata. Ata rotze chocolate. Ata rotze chocolate. Do you want chocolate? And put do in parentheses because we don't have do in Hebrew. Okay? It's much simpler. Now, let's imagine our girl, right? The mirror. Hello. And that's my girl. And I want to approach her and ask her, do you want chocolate? Or just tell her, give her a fact, you want chocolate. I'm going to tell her, by the way, how am I going to approach to a girl? I'm going to tell her at, right? At is the right approach for a girl. And I'm going to tell her at rotsa. Chocolate? At rotsa chocolate, Mira? <laughs> Let's say her name is Mira. There is a name Mira, right? Okay, you got it? And let's say both of them are a couple. They just met. They dated. They're together, the boy and the girl. So now I want to approach them and say to them, and ask them, do you want chocolate? You want chocolate? I'm going to say, right? So you need to think about the right approach for plural, which be atem, atem, and then the conjugation of plural, rotsim, chocolate. Don't think it's too complicated because it's not. It is not. So again, all I need to do is to learn the pronouns. In English, when you have you, it's so general. You don't get any information out of the you, right? In Hebrew, and it's charming, don't think of it as too much work and too much to remember. It's not. Pronouns, you're going to remember. It's not a problem at all. Can you put up the chart in Hebrew also? Oh, you know how to read Hebrew? Um, I guess I can do that. Sure. But that's more of practicing reading and writing. So I guess I can do a reading and writing uh, scope lesson, sorry. Uh, but the main idea for you is to get this. If this is too confusing for someone who knows how to read, I'm going to post, um, yeah, I'm going to post the Hebrew version of it. Will that be helpful for you? If it's not too much of a, no, it's not. That's my job. I'm a teacher. That's what I do. Okay. And as I said, I'm giving you high-value um, knowledge here. Uh, I'm an Ulpan teacher, if you didn't know. Uh, I used to be. I used to teach in the Ulpan, but, you know, private Ulpan, private methods, uh, like shortcuts. Don't worry about it. Did you understand the basics of my lesson? The basics are there is a way to approach to singular according to the gender, and there is a way to approach plural. And it happens in the pronouns, and it happens in the verbs, not just in the four main verbs, in all verbs. But the suffixes repeat themselves. Im, 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 im suffix for plural. Ah, 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 et. Two uh, suffixes for girls. Ah, ah. A uh, and it. Both of them can uh, can be. And for a boy, let's see. So for a boy, we don't see a pattern, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter, okay? You just learn it by heart, and it's a piece of cake, okay? So I'm just going to read the rest of the chart, so you will have it if you want to memorize that, and maybe watch this lesson over and over again. Okay, so let's read the rest of the chart. And by that, we're going to finish our lesson because it doesn't have to be that long. Want, rotze, rotza, rotzim, rotzot, need. Tsa, rich, tsri, cha, tsri, chim, tsri, chot. Can, ya, chol. Yeho la, yeho lim, yeho lot. Love. O hev, o hevet, o havim, o havot. 
So here we see a little difference that we don't have in the first syllable of the rest of them. But it has a reason. When you learn Hebrew, it's easier to understand the exceptions. So as Moshe asked me, right? I remember your name, right? I'm going to post the same chart in Hebrew. And I think that my next uh, scope is going to be teaching you reading and writing. Good. I think it's going to be teaching and uh, reading and writing because next time I would like this chart to be in Hebrew, right? Because, you know, it's kind of like mixing meat and milk together. If we learn Hebrew, we need to do it in Hebrew. Reading and writing is not that hard. And some of you, I guess, learned with Miko how to read and write, Aaron Schaefer's wife. Okay, so I'm going to do reading and writing uh, lesson. That will be number four. I just decided. I think I'm going to do it right now. Don't worry about reading and writing. It's easy. Beseder? So that was the end of the scope. Thank you for watching me. I recorded this lesson again so I can post it on my YouTube channel since uh, Catch didn't catch my Hebstar's lessons. And lesson number three just... Whoop! Uh was gone before I noticed after 24 hours. But I think this one was better, cleaner, and more, f more focused. So thank you for watching. Gonna finish this one. Gonna do reading and writing scope, I think in a few minutes, uh, 30 minutes tops. Okay, I'm just gonna prepare a few materials. Toda, and thank you for watching. Bye.